let's consider the image we have to the right and let's discuss what is shown in this picture and name some of the parts. How is this device calibrated for LDR and HDR? How do you calibrate LDR sources? What quantity specifies brachytherapy sources and what are the units? How do you perform LDR commissioning? What is a resource for brachy commissioning calibration and practices? What is its active volume, stability, and what reading do you get for HDR and LDR sources? So note that in part three, you're not going to be asked all of these questions. You're probably going to have two or three primary questions, and then some of these might get asked as secondary questions. But for the sake of this video and covering this topic, I just wrote them all down for ease. So this is a well-type ionization chamber. So some of the important notes are, one, we have argon within this chamber, and that is at 12 atm. Now that is in here, so this all in here, that is argon. So now right, right here, we just have, you know, typically the walls. So we're looking at a cross section of the chamber right here. Now see this line right here, that is the collecting electrode. And that is also made out of aluminum, something important to know. And another important thing to know here too, is that it's actually cylindrical. The gas goes around this chamber, but if I were to, I'm not sure if I can accurately write this or draw this, but the, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to do a good job, but the electrode is cylindrical. So it's in the center of this well chamber that is circular, and it also goes down here in the bottom. So it's, it looks like a cup, essentially. Then finally, for this part, this red right here, that is the guard ring. So that's also important to note just to help with stability and the electromagnetic parts of this, this collecting electrode. So how is this device calibrated for LDR and HDR? So for LDR, it's calibrated by the ADCL with a known source and a free air ionization chamber. Now for HDR, a calibrated source is traceably calibrated against a standard of reference air kerma rate, and this source then calibrates the chamber, and that again is also done by ADCL. So now how do you calibrate LDR sources? So the first thing you want to do is put that source into the well, and the response is based off position of source. So you need to find what they call the sweet spot by rotating the holder to four different angles. And you want to take the highest reading. For HDR, you have source travel to seven different locations. And that's how you're going to find that sweet spot. So for HDR, you're going to have your source come in here and somewhere in this region, is going to be a sweet spot where you are going to get the highest reading. And so you're going to have a dwell position here and here and here and all the way down. Typically, there's seven spots that you stop the, the source and whatever one has the highest reading, that's your sweet spot. Whereas if you are looking, now I'm going to go to an overhead view and I'm going to look, for example, at the top of a top of this well chamber there is going to be a little dot on the holder. So say there's a hole right here and that would go right here. So that's where you're going to put your LDR seed in this and there's going to be a little dot. So you're going to put that dot at zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 and then 270. So you're just going to rotate this around those four angles and then you are going to find what the sweet spot there is. So what quantity specifies brachytherapy sources and what is its unit? So I'm going to start jumping down here. So this is air kerma strength. We can just call that AKS. 
very important. You have to absolutely know this. And the units are centigrade per centimeter squared hour. That is absolutely essential. You must know that. How do you perform LDR commissioning? So first thing you want to do is be sure that you have the correct equipment. You need to have shields, meters, well chambers, all of the equipment you need to ensure that you have. Know that the assay room does have adequate shielding and that your license allows for LDR. That's something in your radioactive material license you need to ensure is there. Also, how much radiation you have. Ensure that your license covers you there as well. You need to ensure that training and emergency procedures are in place. And there is also wonderful, which jumps down here, what resource, a wonderful resource, TG56 and TG59. So TG56 is breaky code of practice. 59 is HDR treatment delivery. So depending on what question you are asked, reference one of these two, but those are task groups very beneficial, not only using in your clinical practice, but also knowing for this exam. So what is its active volume, stability, and reading? So this is kind of just some extra information that if you know, I think would benefit and really help you get to the next level and get the maximum points out of a question like this. So first thing is, uh, let's see, the 245 cc active volume. That's what we, we have for this ion chamber. We also have a stability within two point percent. So very good stability there. Now reading for HDR and LDR. I think this is really important because it shows that not only have you done these assays, these calibrations, but it helps get you into the mind of being able to understand the physics and just understand whether things make sense. So an LDR source obviously is going to be a lot hotter, right? But we are looking at 80 nanoamps. And LDR, we are looking at approximately 50 picoamps. So 80 and 50, you know, whatever, you could just remember 50 for all of them, but know that LDR or HDR is nano and LDR is pico. That is very important. You don't want to switch those up. And just from practical experience, hopefully you have remembered that. But this is a well chamber, a little bit of brachytherapy and devices for you. If you have any questions, please comment below. Be sure you know all this material to prepare for your exam and happy studying. Thank you for watching.